Monday morning, friends. This is Meg at Chasing Retro. I get to show you a small haul of things that I purchased this past weekend at Recraft. I went back to Recraft. I was in the town that it is inside because I already had a doctor's appointment. So I decided, you know what, might as well just go ahead and stop by and give off the donations that I had, you know, always have an ulterior motive, don't we? So I did, I was able to, to give some donations. I went through my craft cabinet today and, uh, or last week and cleaned some stuff out. So I was able to give some of the items back, but I left with a very large bag of items for a very small amount of money. And I wanted to share those with you today. They have a very large architectural drawer cabinet, the real flat long drawers, and every drawer has a different theme. And inside the paper dolls drawer, there is hardly anything ever there. But today, there was one item inside. Red Butler. If you are familiar with Rainbow Bright from the 1980s, this was one of her good friends. And it's a play on words like Red Butler. <laughs> Uh, I think he is adorable. He's been very loved. His head is floppy. It looks like it's about to tear, but um, I picked him up anyway because he is just adorable. I found this Busilla kit for probably for a baby's nursery or a child's room. It looks like it's from the late 50s, maybe maybe a little earlier. It says, the price tag says Crowley, Milner and Company, and it was originally 39 cents. Can you believe that? So it says stamped per cow patches for applique, and then it has a wood frame and glass included, uh, and it comes in red or blue. This one had both inside, so I don't know if maybe the person bought two boxes and then didn't finish one of them, because here we have the red with the stamped image on the front. Adorable fabric, though. And it's got the, so I don't know what. Someone has this pinned. Uh, so, okay, this was, Maybe this is a pillowcase or something, but it was priced separately. Um, it says the store was in Detroit. <clears throat> Marked down to 19 cents. And then here are the pieces that you would applique onto the red. Um, maybe it's the project that I could finish. I don't know, he's adorable. And it does look like a pillow, um, a pillow sleeve maybe. It's because it has a ruffle at both ends. And this duck looks like he is fishing in a bucket. So to me, it was worth $2 for just this vintage piece of gingham, <laughs> but there's more. Oops, my bag just fell over. There's more. This is the original set, I believe, that someone had started and not finished one of the appliques. Is that not so cute? It's got a duck drinking, I think, out of the bucket. Yeah, so we have one fishing and one drinking. Or maybe he's just staring at the fish. And this one is finished. And if, that, if that's not the cutest thing I have ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> uh, a little bit is undone. There's not stitching on his little mouth, but everything else is complete. That would not be hard to finish up. Oh, and the flower. I'm assuming that would also be blue. So, is that not so cute? And then, of course, we have the frames. Painted red frames with glass, which can be used in any application in the house. A little piece of cardboard. Yep, this one doesn't, let's see. Someone has already put the nails in this to hold it, and this one doesn't have any yet, but that's fine. Needs a good cleaning, but um, I thought it was adorable. Worth the $2. I'm 
just, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this one, but my goodness, this will have to go on a journal cover for sure. Because that is just so adorable. Okay. Ducky Wucky goes fishing. <laughs> I have to see what other ones are in the nursery pictures collection. Okay, continuing on the needlework theme, they have a rack there of, um, they've recently redone something. So those of you who go to stores like this, keep checking in pretty often because I think they sort of um, are constantly rearranging according to what they get in. So evidently they had a bunch of unfinished needlework brought in recently. So they had a, an entire rack full of unfinished needlework pieces hung up with pant hangers. And one of them was this beautiful needlepoint. It's a little skewed. Um, it's like a parallelogram, but um, it could probably probably be wet and reshaped. Um, it's got a little bit of mold or mildew right here. No big deal. That can be cut off. But it's, unlike a lot of needlepoint, it's very flexible. So it could very easily be wrapped around a journal and sewn or glued down. And then... An unfin or I guess it is finished but unframed cruel of two quails. I think these are quails, maybe partridges. But I saw the strawberries and I was like, oh, that is a so cute. So to be determined what I do with this one, this one may be turned into a pillow topper or I might frame it. Um, it's a little too big for a journal, I think, because I really don't want to fold it. I feel like it needs to be seen as one image. But um, this was $2 and this was $1. Not bad. And I think they had just been brought in that day I was there. I didn't know what to expect going at the end of the day on Friday, <clears throat> but I was pleasantly surprised at what I found. One of the things that I was most excited about was the vintage Sears trim that you might have seen in my last video that is now in my shop. I'm gonna sell parts of it off per yard. Um, I have never seen anything like that in the, in the wild, especially on a bolt that large. So I was very excited to see that. I got this sales order book and I really didn't need another one of these, but the reason I picked it up was it has, well, it had a few um, Charlotte's Web. I wonder what that means. They bought albums and fabric. Um, a few of the pages were written on, okay, one customer. <laughs> but I don't have anything with the pink. So these are like the, the triplicate. Uh, white, yellow, and pink. And I had several books like this that are just white and yellow, but I really like the pink. So I grabbed it. All right, let's do the fabrics. This is not vintage, I don't think, but it is adorable. It reminds me of like a Mary Inglebright type print. It's just a very delicate rose, very pastel with minty leaves. And it's somewhat, I mean, it's not as thick as some. It's, it's, it's more of a thinner fabric. I wouldn't say sheer by any means, but a very loose weave, I should say. And then of course I had to get this for my sunflower journals. As you can see, I am working full force on those and may finish them today, if not today, tomorrow. So watch my channel for the flip through of those. Excited about them. They're smaller um, and they're more conducive to people that just want a little small journal to write in for this small season that we have between summer and fall, which is when sunflowers are at their peak. So this is a beautiful red. This looks very 90s. I feel like everybody in the 90s had a kitchen with either this in the red gingham or this in the blue gingham. <laughs> they have the little bags where you can fill the bag for $2 and I would have packed this even more full had we not been 
there so long already. I felt really bad for my husband being there that long. <laughs> and also they were getting ready to start cleaning up and closing up. So I grabbed as many of the vintage ones or ones that I liked the look of as I could. Okay, we'll go through these together since there's not many. This is a very 80s nursery type print. I love it. I can use it in an 80s journal, a baby journal, or a teddy bear journal, which I have on slate for the fall. I love that grid. <laughs> Everything had a grid back then. And then this looks like it might have been maybe a napkin or something because it had this edge, this surged edge. I'm not sure. But whenever I see a calico like this, I uh, pick it up because I just feel like you can never have too many of, of these patterns. And I love the navy background with the bright flowers. This is not old, but it just looked very retro groovy to me. So I grabbed it. I think this would be cool in a, like a sewing journal where I use a 60s sewing pattern. This is just a, a little, it looks like maybe a, um, the edging of a quilt. And they almost look like little cotton blossoms. I don't know what they are, but I love red and aqua together. This is more of a raspberry than a red, but uh, adorable. I tried to grab things this time with the exception of the calicos. <laughs> that was not like anything I already had. Cause it's real easy just to get the things that you love and you, and you already have too many of. Here's another adorable calico. This looks very Halloween or Thanksgiving to me. This looks like vintage sheets. I don't think it is. Uh, these were quilt squares, but they sure do like, look like a vintage sheet. So I was excited about these. I grabbed all of them that were stuck together. I love the orange and yellow. I have no idea how that got in there, but we have a little yellow square. And then another teddy bear, a set of two teddy bears. Look how cute. <laughs> this is fun because I don't, I did not have any teddy, teddy bear fabric up until now. This looks very 70s. This has already been made into something. It looks almost like a collar. I'm guessing it was going to be a collar. <laughs> but so cute. This is a beautiful spring floral, but it could be used any time of year, honestly. But I just love these colors together. This is more of a, um, oh, what is this material called? My mama used to make jackets for me like this. Not denim, like a chambray white denim almost, but maybe it's twill. I can't remember the name of that fabric. That's gonna bug me the rest of the day. This also reminded me of a vintage sheet and I know it's a tiny piece, but you can make really, really small tags with this or washi tape or fabric tie sashes. <laughs> and last but not least is this adorable retro-esque look. It is not really old because I think I saw the name on one of them. Or it might have been the one I left behind. Oh, here it is. Something W Fabrics. So, but they just, they're these cute little 50s looking children playing outside in the summertime. They had these bags of ribbon for a dollar, which is a great, great deal uh, if you need or like most of the ribbons in here. I would say that maybe about 50% of this I like, so for me it was worth that for the dollar. <laughs> I have not looked through it yet, so we'll do that now and then I will, I guess, spend the next hour putting all of these on lace cards. <laughs> So I told my daughter and husband, they were there with me, that these two things right here are worth a dollar to me. So I was happy to get the whole bag just for these two items because these brocade or um, 
That's not brocade. I can't, I don't know why my brain is not working today. It's not embroidered, but you know what I'm talking about. The, the trim with the um, sewing built in in this as well. I also love to look on the back. I know that's not the side that you're supposed to show, but I, I just love the way the back looks on these. <laughs> We have some polka dots. We have a lot of this wine red color. I thought these would make beautiful um, ties for just the right journal. Let me move these fabrics real quick. Then we have little snippets like this, which are perfect for putting into a tag, like a tassel for the tag. American flags, this might be wired, but you can easily use a pair of pliers and grab that wire and pull it out. A really pretty sewn edged baby blue. Another wired piece. Look at this fun hot pink, that's cute. <laughs> Some plaid, I don't have any plaid ribbon. So way on my future radar is a Scotland journal. I have an envelope going. Oh, look, another piece of that. So this will be really cool for that. Another edge, wire edge, but you know, you take the wire out and this would make an awesome pocket. Navy. I love this. I love the hearts. It reminds me of the little flannel gowns that were popular in the 70s and 80s. Nightgowns, I should say. I think I have some a lot like this. I love it. South Carolina flag. This looks like snake skin, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it might have the, the right journal maybe one day. Uh, South Carolina Gamecocks. Um, Christmas. I bet somebody was making bows. What do y'all think? This wide grow game, that's what I think about. And then we have some navy grow game. Purple, oh, that's been cut up weird, like sliced in two. Very wide black. Uh, army. Um, camouflage. Well, this was unexpected. I didn't know this was in there. That's fun. Some more wire edged. What do y'all do with this kind of stuff? Like if you were to take the wire off, would it ravel real bad if you just cut it off as opposed to pulling it out? It might. It might. I thought maybe once you take the wire out, these might make pretty ruffles. Um like a tan, some more of that blue, a, a watermelon and a, an aqua. This is interesting. It's, um, I don't know how to describe this. Can you see? It's like a plastic basket weave or something. Some black uh, satin, thinner black, thick red. This is cute. Looks very fall. White grow gain. This cute orange. Oh, it almost, it's, it's velvety. It's like, almost like turf. <laughs> I wonder what I'll do with that. And then just some more loose pieces and some blue. All right. Was that worth a dollar? Y'all tell me. And the other section of ribbons, I found this bag that I think had been put together by whoever donated it. I don't think this was put together by the store. And these, um, I got these because they just looked more vintage and the colors looked very muted. Like this pink right here is just like a, a delicate ballet pink with a hint of gray. Love that. I love making journal tabs out of this type of ribbon. Beautiful blue, like a French blue. I have lots of that. Ooh, look at this one. That looks old. 
I love that so much. Some more paint that's slightly stained, but you know what? I like that. I love those age stains on them. It's shinier on the back side. I might have to get a bigger um, ribbon drawer for all this. Some thin blues. Oh, these are two separate colors. Oops. Oopsie oops. White blue and French blue. And I have some like this already. I love these um, metal, almost like real thick aluminum foil that just kind of bend around it. That'd be kind of cool to add onto a tag somehow. And here's someone's handwriting. <laughs> And this beautiful butternut yellow. Love that. And then a beautiful mauve. So I was excited about that. Those that bag was two dollars. And then sitting by itself in the trim box was this for fifty cents. Uh, I think it's seam binding. It says wash and wear lace. I don't know. It might just be a decorative lace trim, but I had never seen anything like this before. And I really like the packaging too. I got these, do y'all remember Super Duper publications? I think teachers used to use some of their stuff for bulletin boards. Um, it says compliments of, I wonder if these were like samples, sample bags for stores that used to carry calling cards. Um, this says Frances Meyer, which is um, kind of like Mrs. Grossman. She made stickers as well. I use some of the, her stickers in my Halloween journal. And so these are called Primary Bears, and they just look very 80s and, of course, perfect for a baby or childhood journal or teddy bear journal. They also had the pastel bears, but I liked the Primary better. So cute. I picked up two of these packages of colored Rolodex. I don't think I've ever seen colored Rolodex there before. They had a lot of white too, but of course I didn't want the white because I have some. So I just thought these were super fun. My Roar collection obsession continues. I bought another one today. I got one from Woolworth and it's one of the ones that folds out. It's plastic, but I love it. It's a yardstick, ruler yardstick combo. Okay. I found some stationery, 1998 Liz Schreiner. It looks a lot like Marjolaine Bastion. Mar am I saying that right? Um, looks like it's been used, maybe one or two are missing, but it's almost like this recycled or handmade paper look. And then we've got some note sheets over here. It's gotten a little crease, but that's fine. I found these in those big drawers. These were in the game drawer, game pieces. They're very old bingo cards. I love finding these. I don't find them very often, at least not this old. And these I think were 25 cents a piece, which I think was okay. I mean, ideally I would have found them at a, in a pack for cheaper, but I got all that they had, which I think is seven. So I did buy two embossing folders. This one is by Cuddlebug and it's called Baby's Breath. And it's just like a, I thought they looked very 1950s. It's like a little daisy type design. Um, here's the other one. This one is a Daris and it is uh, like 60s looking daisies and mod flower assortment. And if you know what these are, 
it will show your age. But I know what they are, so I'm old too. We can be old together. <laughs> Interdepartmental mail envelopes. So I was explaining to my daughter while we were there, this is what you used before email. Um, when I was in college, they were still using these at the university. And I worked in the library. I was a student worker. <clears throat> And I would frequently have to carry these between the library and the next department that I needed to go to. And the people whose name is on the list would have to open it, read what was inside, and then check off. I don't know what the holes are for. If y'all know what the holes are for, please tell me. Um, but you would basically just sign off and say, yes, I read this and I'm passing it on. But I thought that this was a fun little stack. This is how many I have. <laughs> way too many. I'll probably be sharing some of these in Happy Mail. Um, but I got all these for $2. The way they tie is pretty cool too. It's got this wax twine with a little button that you wrap around the button down here. You can see that. But yeah, so fun. My husband picked up these erasers, these gummed erasers. Um, they're awesome. And this one is the, I don't know what you call those, the white ones, they're awesome too. But I remember these from elementary school. And last but not least, I got these little labels. <laughs> they're not vintage, but I thought they were so cute and they would be cute in a sewing journal. Made with love by grandma. And they have little rocking chairs in the background. <laughs> so these would be sewn onto clothing or a quilt that your grandma made for you. I thought they were so adorable. So that was my recraft haul, my uh, thrifted treasures. So I will link back to Dale at Not Too Shabby Chic since I am posting this on a Monday. I will link back to her collaboration called Thrifted Treasures. If you'd like to join in, there is Nothing you have to do other than post a video and then use that hashtag and link to her channel. We would love to see what you found for a good deal. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay tuned for the flip through of the Sunflower Journals and I'll see you soon.